Hey everyone, let's talk perfumes. Have I talked perfumes in a long time? No, I haven't. Do you know why I thought about doing this? Well, actually, it was one of you the other day that came up with the bright idea, and I will put your username here as a thank you for that idea, because it was quite good. Luxury perfumes can be a really good way into a brand if you're not quite at a position where you're ready to buy something that's got like a big ticket price. But not only that, they smell nice. I mean, that's the whole point of a perfume, isn't it? These are some of my personal favorites. Did you know that, no one needs to know this, it's not even a fact, but when I go to sleep at night, I like to, I get this from my grandmother, she did the same thing. She used to sleep with perfume on, like, because she was like, oh, it's uplifting. <laughs> In the day, she used to wear YSL uh, opium. I can't remember what she used to use at night, but anyway, for me, my two favorite, favorite my two favourite fragrances are both from Jo Malone. Depends on how I'm feeling at the time. Do you know what I tend to do as well when it comes to perfume is when I'm going to put it on, anyone else get this? Some days I'll smell something and I'll be like, oh God, that smells so good. I want to wear that today. And other days I'll be like, no, like it doesn't smell as good as it did yesterday and something else will totally grab me. And I do that before I put perfume on, I grab a few of my favorites and I smell them all and I just put on the one that I'm most attracted to. So I use one of these two. This is Red Roses and Peony and Blush Suede. Mostly I use Red Roses. I find I just find when I sleep, it's quite, it's quite a relaxed, gentle smell, but it's nice and floral and fresh and I quite enjoy it. So I just like spritz it on me before I sleep. I am quite into uh, limited edition perfumes or perfumes that are not your run of the mill. Like for example, I quite like it when you wear a perfume that is not popular and you don't smell other people wearing. and. You, Perfume changes depending on the person who's wearing it and your skin, the way your skin reacts to it. So a perfume will smell subtly different person to person, but I think generally, for example, things like um, Terry Mugler, Angel, I can smell that a mile off and I don't really feel like the smell changes dramatically. And the, my favorite place to go for limited edition or lesser known perfume brands is Harrods. Now, there are two places in Harrods you can go and buy perfume. There is the main cosmetics hall where it's got Chanel, um, Dior, Charlotte Tilbury. Forget that one. They've got this mate, no, they've got this perfume room and it's in between the handbags and the cosmetics hall. And it is full of like lesser known products. It's even got things from brands that you may, for example, Guerlain, where this is from, you can't buy this from the regular counter. You've got to go to like a specialist counter to get it. Like if you, when I went to the cosmetics counter at Harrods to get this, it wasn't even in their system. I had to go and get it from somewhere else. So I do quite like limited editions. This is from Guerlain and it's called Cure Beluga. It smells, it's one of my most favorite smells. It smells like vanilla but it's almost got tobacco running through it, but not quite like Tom Ford, that tobacco one. It's quite manly, it's quite like leather. Um, it's quite masculine, but the vanilla note through it isn't sweet. It's not like a sickly sweet vanilla, it's a very um, savory vanilla. And it's one of my favorites and I've not been able to find it anywhere except at Harrods. Can't remember how much that was. I feel like that was about 200 pounds from memory. The next one that I've been wearing since 2016 is this. This is from Atkinson's. I really do like oud based perfumes. I quite like the kind of like Eastern exotic base notes that you get with ouds. They're quite strong and I quite like that. Um, and I always say with Oud, some of them can be quite intense and you've got to find one that works for you. Some of the really strong ones, I don't like, like they're too strong for me. Whereas when I walk past someone wearing it, I might be like, oh, that's quite nice. But on me, it's too strong. This is a really good go between because it's sweet. I can smell it now. It's sweet, but it's still got that 
deep, musky, woody, oud vibe going through it, but it's not like so intense that it knocks you out. Also with this, this is also from that perfume haul that I was telling you about in Harrods. This is called Oud Save the Queen, and there is a male version as well called Oud Save the King, and it's in um, the same gold bottle. And you can mix and match them. So for example, David has the male version. And when you wear them yourself, but you're both together, <laughs> it makes a really nice combinational fragrance. This was around about 150 pounds and you get, this is 100 mil. You can't get any other sizes in this. It, that's what it comes as. It does last a long time though. This I bought in I think like 2017 and with all of my perfumes I store them in a cool area in uh, my dressing room and they're not in any direct light because some perfumes, for example this one, this is by Dior and this is the new Miss Dior. This, despite the fact that I have not kept it in the sunlight, this is discoloured. This is a lot darker than the way it started out. When I originally got this it was a real... Um, powdery light pink like pinky peach color and it's gone quite orangey now and I noticed this the other day because I wear this more in the summer as I say I got this I was I was sent this last summer by Dior and the smell of it's changed slightly originally it was quite powdery and raspberry and rose and it's changed now and it's it's like a lot deep it's more it's more musky in a way that I don't really love and it's such a shame I don't know why that's happened but some, I feel like with the really good quality perfumes, it happens less. Right, these two perfumes here, another, well, this one's limited edition. This one isn't. This one is Oud as well. Let me see. Glistening Amber. This is by Juicy Couture. Now, you know Juicy Couture does like Viva La Juicy. I love that fragrance. I remember wearing that when I was in my 20s and thankfully when I used to wear it nothing bad ever happened do you ever get that said it before but with perfumes when I if if something ever happened at a period of time where I used to wear it if I smell that smell in the future it takes me straight back to that time do you ever get that I've got that with some I can't even go near them some of them it's like Marc Jacobs Daisy. I used to wear that all the time in 2008. And it's not that anything bad happened at that time. It was, in fact, nothing bad happened. But when I smell it, I feel like I wore it for two years when I was working at this particular company. It just reminds me of working there. It's really odd. Juicy Couture have a limited edition run of three new fragrances, or they were at the time. I don't know if you can still get them. One is in this, um, orangey bottle, one is in a pink bottle, and I think one is in a silver, and they're meant to be a more grown-up adult version of their original ones. So the concept behind it is, for those of us who grew up with Viva La Juicy, and we're now a bit older, and we're not really feeling that, Juicy Couture are trying to catch up with this kind of thing by creating perfumes that we might have evolved into. And this one is really, really nice. Tom Ford Velvet Orchid. I haven't worn this in ages. See, isn't that weird? I love that fragrance, but today I'm not feeling it. Do, honestly, does anyone else get this? Like yesterday, I was not in the mood for this, but today, just smelling it there when you were there, I can, I'm can. i like, yeah, I really wanna wear this today. It's so odd how that happens. Next. Oh, wow. Okay. If you want to feel hot AF. There are two fragrances you need to try. One I think is more evening and one is more day. This is the first one. When I spray this on myself, I feel like a 10 out of 10. Now, the only thing is I can only wear this at certain, at certain times, like I'm feeling this right now, but at other times I can't wear it but I cannot describe it. When you spray it on yourself, you set, you can smell it all day. It's in, it's very strong. This is Armani Privé, the Vert Malachite, green Malachite. You can also get, there's a red one. And I think there's now a, there's now like a baby blue one as well that I haven't smelt. The green one is my personal favorite. It's just got like a rich, deep, beautiful scent to it. These are really expensive. However, 
I bought this last year and it's still going now and that's the great thing. If you buy yourself a quality fragrance and you pay over a hundred pounds for it, I'm not talking about even things like Chanel. Forget Chanel, Dior, uh, what else? Like Yves Saint Laurent fragrances, the kind of high street type ones, forget those. If you buy something that is more premium, it will last you longer because you will need to spray on less of it and you will get a stronger scent payoff, promise you. So weirdly, the fragrances I've got that are cheaper, I've used more, but I wear them less. But then these I wear more and I've got more left. Uh, it's just weird. The other fragrance that you need to wear in the evening, like if you're going on a date or if you just want to smell amazing, try this. You wouldn't believe it. This is by MAC and it's called Velvet Teddy. You know they do the Velvet Teddy lipstick? Well, this is, they. I don't know if they still do this. This was a um, perfume that went alongside it. Wow, 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 wow. It smells so seductive. It's like chocolate and toffee, but not in a childish way. It's like coffee and caramel and chocolate, but it's not sickly. It's not heavy. It's not like, oh, I've just turned 10 years old and I've sprayed myself in chocolate. It is kind of, kind of like Black Opium by YSL, but nicer, like a whole other level. It's very different. I cannot even think of another fragrance that smells even slightly similar to this when I think about things. So these two, day and night, you'll be like a 10 out of 10. I'm probably not gonna do every single perfume because I've got loads here. I'm just picking out my favorites. Before I move on to florals, and I've got a particular taste in florals. I don't like things that are too flowery. I, I like there to be a bit of a, like a musk note through it. But, um, so if you're, if you know what I'm saying here, then I hopefully will have some stuff you like. This, however, this was sent to me by Givenchy. This is a new fragrance out. It's called Linter, Linter D. Uh, and really weird thing was, when this first got launched, maybe in February this year, I was in Harrods with a friend of mine. And you know the people in there that like stand in the hallways and they spray the perfume in the air? So I, did, I didn't see the lady who was doing it, but as I walked through, myself and my friend were like, what is that heavenly smell? And we were, for the first time ever, we were trying to track down the person with the perfume because normally they're quite annoying. They try and get you. They're like, do you want me to spray this all over you? And then you can go and buy it and I'll come with you to the till so you definitely buy it. We were actually looking for her. I took a tester because I thought I want to try this perfume and see how it changes on my skin before I go ahead and buy it. And in the meantime, Givenchy, who are the loveliest company, reached out to me and they just happened to say, can we send you some of this? And I thought, wow, I like that's, I really, really appreciate that because I was about to go and buy it anyway. Oh, that's really nice. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of similar to that, but different. It's, it's lighter than that. Now for florals. When it comes to floral fragrances, I'm quite picky on it. I really like, as you've seen there, for me, I quite like, heavy woody fragrances that are masculine but they've got a, a like a, a sweet note to them that takes the edge off it if that makes any sense i like to be able to put on a perfume and smell it like all day and i don't want to have to keep i don't have to take the perfume with me and keep applying it again i want to have something that's really strong but when it comes to florals, I don't like florals that smell overly like a bouquet of flowers. The only one that I'm okay with is that Jo Malone Red Roses, but I wouldn't wear that in the day. That's the kind of thing that I would wear at night because I find it quite soothing and quite um, uplifting to smell. However, florals that I do really like are this one, and all florals, I don't wear them in the winter. So these I'm about to kind of get out now as soon as the sun shows up. The first is this. If you are, if you are into your ouds and you also struggle in the summer when you don't want to wear something so heavy, try this. This is by Jo Malone and it's called, um, what is it called? This is called Jasmine Sandback and Marigold. 
didn't think I was going to like it at first, but it's good. So hang on, let me just explain. The Jo Malone fragrances in clear bottles. These are, is that no toilette? No, what is it? What is it? It's a cologne. These are also colognes, but they are a more intense version of it. And the ones in the black bottles are slightly more expensive because they use ingredients that are more expensive than what is used in the regular ones. So for example, you might find that there are versions of this that have got like Moroccan rose in it or oud or elements of perfume that are more expensive. This is a fragrance and probably like the only one from Jo Malone that I love wearing in the day. But as I mentioned earlier, I personally really find with fragrances that the fragrances you would tend to find in high street stores, even the designer ones like Dior and so on, when they're not from their top level line collection, I don't find that they last terribly long. And it's the only, it's the kind of thing that you only notice when you've been using one of their like mainline items and then you go and you try something from their premium line like I forget the name of them but um Dior have got their range of like really expensive perfumes I forget the name I've got like a sample around here somewhere they're like two or three hundred pounds for a bottle they last they really do last and they are beautiful fragrances and you've got quite a few to choose from uh and I would just say that if if you were to compare what you can buy in, in a regular store from Dior and compare it to that premium line. The premium line will last you longer because you have to wear less. It stays good for longer, in my experience, from what I've shown you here. And you can smell it on yourself for longer. Whereas the kind of lesser expensive ones, even though they're still expensive, these I find I get through quicker because I'm spraying them on constantly. They are my favorites. I keep looking because there's so many that I haven't spoken to you about, but this video is already going to be really long. I very much hope you've enjoyed watching and I will see you in the next video.